Hey guys, welcome back to the garden. It is early April, but it is already already heating up here in Central Texas. So I'm gonna just walk you through what I'm doing this week. I've got some garden chores, we're planting, we're direct sowing, we're harvesting, we're doing all the things. Come on, let me take you. I am thickly mulching my potatoes with two to three inches of cedar bark. Mulching the potatoes prevents the tubers from turning green, which is poisonous. Mulching prevents soil erosion, maintains moisture in the soil, makes the soil more even temperature, and prevents soil-borne disease. Many diseases that affect tomatoes are found in your soil. What happens is the rain hits the soil, causes splashback, bringing the spores from the soil up onto the leaves of the tomato, where then it gets infected and it causes severe problems. Mulching prevents all of that. My gutters leak right here, and until I can afford to fix them or replace them, I'm making the best of the situation by harvesting quite a bit of rainwater. I use a simple siphon to equalize the water between the two trash cans, and I'm able to collect about 200 gallons of rainwater. I'm removing all the debris and everything out of this bed to get it ready for planting. I'm using a simple bamboo stake just to make some furrows and get it prepped and ready to go. This area has been a problem for me since I moved in. The builder had mounded up soil against the brick on the house, which had blocked the weep holes, which was causing a lot of problems. I came through and hand dug out right next to the foundation to make sure that those weep holes weren't blocked. But now I need to regrade this entire area. I'm using cardboard to go ahead and block the light which will kill the grass and make it much easier for me to regrade this coming fall. I'm hoping to pull this whole garden back and expand it all the way against the house. This will prevent grass from coming in on that side, make a better walkway, and overall just make the garden much more functional for me. <sighs> Done. Gardening is a community. These are some blackberry plants that I am potting up for a friend of mine. It is very common in the gardening community that if you have extra plants, instead of killing them, you plant, you propagate them and you share them with your friends. Most of us want more plants than we can afford. And this is one thing we do to help each other out. I'm sifting the soil just to make sure I don't have any major chunks in there. It tends to be very heavy on bark and there's big chunks of bark and your seeds can't germinate through those. So by sifting the soil, I'm giving my seeds a better chance. And the bark that I sift out, I just use as a mulch to top dress my potted plants. I like to fill my seed trays in or over the wheelbarrow because it catches all the spills and this is a pretty messy job. So I, once I batch out and fill all those seed trays, then it's time for me to pick what I'm gonna plant. There's never enough space to plant everything that I wanna plant. So what I like to do is I like to lay out my seeds on the tray where I'm gonna be planting so I can see exactly what I have room for. This allows me to reprioritize. Originally, I had put down some sunflower seeds, but those are so easy to direct sow that I decided to take those out of the tray and put in some other things. I'm planting some more sweet corn. Right now I have spinach and carrots growing where I want to be putting the sweet corn. So to get a little bit more time to harvest the spinach and the carrots, I'm going to go ahead and sow these in the tray. Now it's not, it's not typically recommended that you plant sweet corn in the trays, but I have seen many gardeners that I respect do it and it works. And this also lets me get an extra harvest out of the spinach and carrots. I'm starting crisp, some Crispedia. I've never been successful in growing this. It's a really cool structural, structural flower. It's also called yellow drumstick. It looks like a big floofy ball of sunshine on top of a stick. It's really pretty, it dries really well, and I have wanted to grow it for years. I have been trying for three years, but I found out I was doing it at the wrong time of year. I was doing it in the height of summer, but I need to be doing it when it's a little bit cooler. Status is a very cool structural flower. It's upright, it's beautiful, it comes in a variety of colors. I am I think it's called the Candy Tuft mix is what I'm planting. We're gonna see how it goes, I've never done it before. 
I'm starting a few varieties of salvia. Salvia has been highly recommended to me for my area. So I'm doing one variety called the Blue Better variety and a different one called the Blue Victory variety. And we'll see which one comes out better. I don't know. Celosia, one of my favorite flowers. It's very velvety, it has a coral-like structure, uh, and it dries super well. Keeps its color, looks amazing. I love it. Last year I grew a few, this year I'm trying to grow a lot. Last year I grew King's Coral, which is a nice, beautiful, pink, corally color. It's very beautiful. And this year I'm adding another variety called Indiana Giant. It's a more deep red. It's very pretty and I'm really excited. I'm a bit of a gambler in the garden. I'm a little bit late on getting these chickpeas in the ground to do succession sowing, but I'm gonna try it out. This is my first year growing chickpeas and I'm not really sure what to expect, so we're just gonna try. This is a very protected garden. It gets morning sun and afternoon shade because it's close to the house. So I'm hoping that they don't get burnt up by the Texas sun. I'm just using a simple bamboo stake to create the planting holes for my edamame. Originally, I was supposed to plant carrots down the middle of the tomatoes months and months ago, and I just never got there. So I switched gears and we're using the space for some edamame now. Edamame is supposed to be a good companion plant with tomatoes, so let's see. <laughs> the petunias! I love flowers. This year I am trying to grow tons of flowers along with my vegetables. I have been planting petunias since I bought my home three years ago. But buying plants can be expensive, which is why I am so proud that this year I grew all of these from seed. The seeds are super tiny, but came up so easily and they produced all of these beautiful flowers. I debated on where to put them this year, but I've settled on surrounding this table area. I eat most of my meals out here, and being surrounded by flowers will make it that much more inviting. These petunias are a little overgrown in their container. I needed to plant them out a few weeks ago and just didn't get there. So that's okay. All I'm gonna do is carefully tease apart their roots, and I'm gonna plant them a little bit deeper than normal and water them in well. They should come along just fine. Harvest. The best part of any garden is getting to harvest. We've had quite a lot of rain this week. So I went out the morning after a rainstorm when these are at peak. This is the ultimate best time to pick them is after they've been well watered and it's in the morning. So they've had all night to drink up everything that they need and to recover from any heat or stress that they've had. I like to harvest whatever's ready, even if I'm not ready to use it, and then I just preserve it if I need to. So spinach, I tend to cook up. I like to have spinach in a spinach quiche. I like to freeze it and I can use it to make all sorts of dishes later, including spinach dip. It cooks really well. I like to saute my spinach with a little butter and a little salt. And I just, I enjoy that for part of my breakfast most days. Carrots are a great treat in the garden. Searching and finding carrots is a great thing for kids to do. If you want kids to be involved in the garden, 100% recommend this. Garden peas are my favorite, favorite. They're like a candy. You just can't stop eating. You can see I'm harvesting the ones that are absolutely ready and some of them are close, but they need a little bit more time to fully develop. Look how many. I've never harvested this many before. Granted, I didn't let myself eat more than like five as a snack while I was picking, and I usually just eat them the second I pull them. That's really good. I'm gonna go get these cleaned up, make some food, and eat them all. Bye. Okay, can you see that? That's a quiche I made with onions and spinach from my own garden. The eggs were from my friend's chickens. I'm a friend who keeps chickens. And I'm gonna eat this for lunch, but first I'm just gonna show you a couple of things. So the dill, this is more dill than I need to use at one time. And dill will go over quickly. It doesn't like the heat and we're heating up already. 
So I'm just gonna tie this in a bundle and I'll hang that in my pantry to dry for a few days. And then when it's about 50% dry, I'll put it in a brown paper bag to let it finish drying, but so that no dust gets on it. I find if I put the brown paper bag on right away, it has a tendency to go moldy. So I've washed this, I've patted it dry, and I'm just gonna let it hang. But isn't it beautiful? I mean, it's almost like feathers. It's really pretty. These are my garden peas. Probably my favorite thing from the whole garden. And I just pop the top like this. So this, this is the end with the flower. I just use my thumbnail, pinch, pull it open. I mean, look at those full round peas. It doesn't get better than that. And then typically I just grab it like this and use my teeth to scrape them out. Let me see if I can show you without being super unladylike. They are so much sweeter than you'll ever get at the supermarket. They're like candy. Honestly, once I start, I can't really stop. I pull the string off, open. Less elegant, but still delicious. Mmm, so good. I'm gonna eat those in a minute. Now carrots. They look really pretty with the tops on, but the longer you keep the tops on, the more goodness that they're stealing from your carrots. Carrots, when they're cold, they store, they'll convert their starch to sugar, so they're very sweet if they go through the winter. And these ones, I'm gonna cut the tops off. Carrot tops are edible, and I feed them to my friend's chickens. And I do the same thing with all the, the pea shells. But these are so crunchy and they're so sweet. I've given this a good scrub. It has little hairy roots on it still, but that's fine. This, this is why you garden, because you can't get this at the store. Oh, it's so good. I wish you guys, mmm. I wish y'all could come over and taste this because oh my goodness, I need to grow more carrots like oh, all the time. They're so good. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna eat and you guys I'll see you next time. Goodbye from the garden. Alright, I'm gonna I got, um, I'm gonna put a couple of his end for them to pull on, and then I'll go in and just pass it to them. Yes, how about you? Did you want to 